So what do these things say uh, about, about what leadership is not? I, I think they say a lot. I, I think they tell us that leadership is really not about grand strategy. Now, I, don't get me wrong. I think strategy is important for any organization, and particularly for any business organization. But you all know the hard part of strategy is not defining it, it's implementing it. The hard part of strategy is getting people in an organization of five, or 50, or 5,000, or, or 50,000. The hard part of strategy is getting those people to understand the strategy, to buy into the strategy, to own the strategy, to row on the oars in the same rhythm and the same cadence. That's the tough part of strategy. So, so my, my view is strategy implementation is much more difficult and strategy formulation. I think the examples I've gave you and there are many others, I, I don't think leadership's about personal charisma. Um, I, I think effective leadership uh, is, is uh, quite divorced from uh, charisma. And I, I think this is another way of saying, I think leaders come in all shapes and sizes. Some are short, some are tall, some dress for success, some are modest and self uh, self-effacing, some have big egos like Steve Jobs. But I don't think it's a requisite for effective leadership. Third, I don't think leadership's about inspiring oratory. I haven't seen too many people around uh, organizational life that sound like or can talk like Churchill or Gandhi or JFK. I, I think that's largely, uh, um, you know, a myth. And finally, and I think just as important as those three, I don't think I don't think leadership's about being the smartest man or woman in the room. I, I don't think it's about being the most technically expert. Uh, we, we know Steve Jobs claims that Steve Wozniak had much more technical skill. We know from the D Disney example that he wasn't really an accomplished artist or illustrator. We should know from Oppenheimer, who was considered a genius, that in the Manhattan Project, Eight people went on to win the Nobel Prize over the next 20 years. Oppenheimer never won the Nobel Prize. So I think it's important to be competent. I think it's necessary to be technically uh, literate, but I don't think you need to be the most technically uh, fluent person in the room. And I think the trick for a leader is to access those people in the organization who do have the expertise. So if that's not what leadership is, then obviously it's going to be about accurate planning and budgeting. Organizations, whether they're law firms or whether they're big organizations like Home Depot, spend a fair amount of time thinking about what the plan for next year, what it's going to cost us for next year, what are our revenues going to be for next year, or our fees. It's clearly about making sure we have the right people doing the right things and the right jobs. We have to plan to have that right organization. And clearly, when I say effect, effective controlling and problem solving, that's because things never happen as anticipated, events never occur as expected. And so uh, you spend 75% of your time doing problem solving and adapting and reacting to events like the Great Recession. And obviously, these are important to add order and consistency and predictability, which every organization needs, except that's what management's about. And I think it's important for every organization to be well managed. But if that's all you focus on, it's sort of like the post office of the Department of Photo Vehicles. So what's very important is for organizations to understand they need to be well managed and well led. And that's why smart organizations and successful organizations understand the importance of establishing direction. This is the vision and the strategies to get where you want to go. This is about building alliances and coalitions because departments and silos and organizations can often fight and argue with one another. And clearly, day in and day out, it's about motivating and inspiring people. And this motivating and inspiring people, particularly during a recession when 401k contributions are suspended or cut, when layoffs are constantly implemented, when laid off people aren't called back. This is very, very, very difficult. And this is what's important to making sure that while an organization is well led and 
is orderly and consistent and predictable, it, it also can change and adapt, and adapt to changing economic conditions, new competition, new customers, new regulation. You better believe that banks are going to have to adapt to new regulation over the next 12 to uh, 24 months. So what does that require? What, what does that entail? Well, I, I think leadership is all about building followership. I, I think it's all about pulling people. I think it's all about taking people with you. That is, it's much less about the use of power and much more about the empowerment of others. And that's all about managing relationships, day in and day out, managing relationships down in the organization, managing relationships up, and clearly managing relationships with colleagues and peers. And all of this, all of this to be done effectively requires HTHC. Anybody gets this, or you get an extra book. Uh, this this is all about hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> this is not about great speeches. This is not about charisma. These are the hundreds of transactions each one of you have every day where you're uh, offering guidance and encouragement. You're asking for important information. You're giving people feedback. You're demonstrating cooperation. You're telling uncomfortable truths. You're holding people accountable. That's what you do every single day, or need to do. Uh, and this is the stuff that people don't see. See, leadership's like an iceberg, right? 90% of it is hidden below the surface. It's not about grand oratory. It's about those transactions that you have to have every day. So what are some of those principles or rules or what I call laws that ultimately you can use to in fact motivate people to do great work every single day. So you, you got a copy of a book, there's 50 laws, I'm not going to go through 50 laws because you'd already be drinking the fourth glass of wine if, if I even attempted to do that, but I have 10 laws I'd like to share with you, just 10. <laughs> 